We've already studied several ways to measure the concentration of a solution, including molarity. Well, here's another way to measure concentration. It's called molality. It's similar to molarity, but there's a few important distinctions. So molality, remember, is just another way to quantitatively express the concentration of a solution, especially in reference to colligative properties. So here's the formula. Molality equals moles of solute particles divided by kilograms of solvent. So we can write that a little bit shorter. We could say M equals N particles divided by kilograms solvent. So let's look at this again. Um, we're going to need to remember this. Where you'll be, we'll be using it frequently. Molality equals how many moles of particles there are dissolved in how many kilograms of solvent. What do you think the units might be? Yeah, you guessed it. It's going to be moles per kilogram. That's what we see here. How many moles of particles there are for every one kilogram of solvent. Instead of saying moles per kilogram, uh, we can also just call it molal, pronounced molal. Not molar, that was molarity, but it's pronounced molal. Now, because colligative properties depend on the number of particles, we must consider soluble ionic compounds as multiple particles. Here's what I mean by that. If we have one mole of sodium chloride, you know that when this dissolves in water, it will break up into sodium and chloride. That's just like if you have one mole of bicycles, you have two moles of tires. In the same way, if you have one mole of sodium chloride, you'll actually have two moles of particles. You'll have one mole of sodium ions and one mole of chloride ions. What about if we had one mole of magnesium chloride? If you dissolve that in water, how many particles do you think there'd be? Well, we'd have magnesium and we'd have two chlorides for a total of three moles of particles. See how this is working? What if we dissolve one mole of sodium sulfate? How many moles of particles would that make up? Well, you know sodium sulfate will split up into sodium and sulfate. But we have two sodiums, and we have one sulfate. Remember, sulfate is SO4. We have one sulfate. So two sodiums and one sulfate will make three particles. Let's try one more. Ammonium sulfate. Well, that will break up into two ammoniums because we have two ammoniums and one sulfate. So this will also be three particles. Now this next one is a little bit tricky. This is glucose, or simple sugar. When we dissolve one mole of glucose in water, how many moles of particles do we have? Well, this is a molecular compound. This is this is purely covalent. This is not an ionic compound. So when glucose dissolves in water, it does not break apart. It stays together. So in fact, if we have one mole of sugar molecules, when we dissolve that in water, it will still be one mole of particles. And once again, that's because it does not break up. It stays together.